that didn't work. I'm just using a new computer now. OK. Thank you for joining. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, if you're good to go, we can start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so I'll just introduce you, and then we are all good to go. So hey, everyone. Thank you for joining for Mentor Connect Edition 2. This week, we have with us Anne Andrews, the founder of uh, Tech Funic. She Anne is a technopreneur fellow. She's a product enthusiast, and she's done a lot of cool stuff throughout her career. So it's an honor to have you here, Anne. We have a lot of budding students here who are like thinking about following their passion, finding their dream career. But a lot of us, including me, are stuck in the process of finding out what our passion really is. So right. I'm sure that this session is going to be a breakthrough for all of us. Over to you, Anne. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thomas, right? We spoke on the phone, right? Yes. I'm Thomas, yeah. Thomas. Got it. Got it. So uh, happy to be here. And I see eight tiles, nine tiles. I would love it if whoever is able to have their video on can join. So I'm not speaking to a blank screen, but have, you know, <clears throat> faces to associate with names. So whoever is able to, if you can have your video on, that would be great. Thank you. Wow, that didn't work. Uh, OK, how do we do this? Hmm. Anyone who, who would have their video on, uh, I'm happy to take a personal call with them and uh, uh, you know, help you with whether it's uh, guidance with respect to higher education or, uh, all right, OK, so that had some effect. Thank you, Salman. Uh, happy to share my contact information later. And if you call me, I will take your call. Anyone else? who would value direct interaction with me, all you need to do is turn on your camera. OK, low bandwidth. <laughs> Bijoy, right, yeah. OK, all right, I guess uh, <clears throat> Ria, thank you for joining. I saw that wonderful poster that you made of me, and uh, that's great. OK, all right. OK, three people. At least I have three faces, four faces. That's great. That's great. That's OK. Thank you, Shaheen. Thank you. Thank you. At least I know that I'm, you know, people are paying attention, right? That's important when I, well, no, that doesn't work. You can't just turn it on and turn it off. You need to have it on for, <laughs> for me to speak with. Oh, it's not a proper situation at Boys Hostel. I wonder what really happens there. <clears throat> All right, guys. Uh, apologies for the delay. We are uh, getting started a little late. So I'm going to speak fast to compensate for that. Uh, I'll speak for probably 10, you know, 15 minutes, and then I'll turn it over to you for you for you to have your questions. I do have a hard stop at 10.30 my time, which would be 9 your time. So I really apologize for, uh, you know, being late and having the video thing. My name is Ann Andrews, as uh, as Thomas said. So I am uh, I grew up in Trivandrum mostly. My parents are from uh, Kotayam and Alapi, uh, and uh, I'm assuming most of you are from Kerala and can speak Malayalam, right? So if I switch or if I mix Malayalam, that should be fine. Good. So I grew up in Trivandrum, College of Engineering, Trivandrum, and I'm Padichada. Well, now we have some background noise. But okay, thank you. Great. So CET learning and Padishad, which is College of Engineering to Andrum. And uh, <clears throat> so I had this early, uh, well, I graduated in 2003. So I had this very typical, you know, go to a girl's high school, go to, uh, that was the last batch of pre-degree. We, we didn't have 11th and 12th. We still had pre-degree. So I did that. And then that was at Maravanis College and then College of Engineering to Andrum for four years. And then the typical software service company uh, life cycle, right? The Infosys, Wipro's, Cognizance, and TCSs of the world was ruling uh, the campus placement scenario there. So <clears throat> I was a CGPO rep as well for my class. And uh, I got placed at Cognizant uh, right away, right? So then I couldn't apply for any other companies which came onto campus. And uh, Nobody cared really if you got placed at one place. That's about it, and and uh, you know that's all that matters. I, I'm placed. 
So I joined this company, uh, Cognizant, and then they I was at I was at the Chennai campus for some time, and they actually had me go through a training for like two months right away because they knew that whatever I had learned in college was not enough uh, to for me to do anything you know particular with their clients. So to put put me in front of our clients, they put me through an intensive two month uh, <clears throat> training which again was not very useful to be honest. It's again, how much of Java do you practice and do, right? So, uh, and then after a year, right, I was in Bangalore, I was in Chennai, I was in Calcutta, right? And I, all of these are like choices I made, right? After three months, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm like kind of like bored here. So what's the next thing I can do? And then I took up a project in uh, of AstraZeneca. Like I went to uh, Calcutta, learned something new, um, interacted with different people, et cetera. And within a year, they sent me on site because I spoke pretty good English. That's the one thing, right, which is uh, <coughs> which is really important. Kerala, uh, especially, uh, um, you know, you go to that's my phone. I'm going to ignore it. So, Kerala thele varanthu hiliya. Like college leka padi kimbo. Aarim English samsari ke thele. All aarim Malayalam. Aarim glu English samsari chhu poya. Avare kone edichu kollu. Right? It's like oh, you know, thangra saai panallu. Evada naai vai thena So that's a, a typical thing. That's that ragging and that uh, you know that's that that kind of a that's something I faced in my college as well. My education was Holy Angels Convent Trivandrum Learning Ambassador. So those who know from Trivandrum. <clears throat> and during that time, the sisters would uh, insist that we speak in English. Karna language communication skills. So uh, so when if I even good morning, oh, good morning. So um, I faced that in college, but that's what set me aside and gave me an edge when I started working because my English was stellar. My fluency and my, you know, the words I use, my my breadth of my vocabulary, all of that helped me. Um, and uh, it accelerated my process of, uh, you know, getting promoted as well as being able to communicate and take a larger roles as well as come to the U.S. Because, hey, her communication skills were spectacular. You could put her in front of a client and she can speak very well. She can communicate very well. So whatever you do, right, e Java, I mean, the skills that you teach, that you, you know, the programming languages, yes, that's important, but it's also important to be able to communicate what it is that you know give me guys one second let me just take this one call i'll be back with you just in a sec sure yeah no i apologize for that i'm trying to like put my phone on mute so that it does not uh disturb us anymore yeah so first thing is right your communication skills uh, do work on that whatever the rest of the people around you say uh and i'm thinking that's not much of a problem here right you you're growing up watching netflix and amazon prime whatnot uh but hearing and understanding is not the same as speaking so so practice speaking english right so that you come across as confident and you don't have to think about what you can think about the content of what you're not what you're going to say and not how you say it or your accent or you won't have me that self-consciousness will not happen right so make sure that you practice speaking english and then my trajectory was after that i came to the us i started with like a few firms called uh, well uh, merck nova nordisk what i did was data modeling for business intelligence applications which means there are fact tables dimension tables so you design what the data structures are going to look like right and i you know had gotten a few certifications which i'm sure you're all going right i mean are uh, doing um, and at that time, Technopark Unda Peshe, this internship culture was not there. Whereas now, my my the company that I founded, right, Techfanica, the entire website is either CET or interns. And the juniors, and I'm really hey guys, you know, this is what I'm doing. And they're like four or five of them. They are the ones. So, so my initial days of, uh, of founding Techfanic was with an entire team from CET. Which is like I have the standing in the college. So if I say, and hey, I graduated in 2003, do you want to help me with that? They're all like, yes, JG, totally, right? So uh, you guys, Akshaya, hey, good to see you. Good to see you. <clears throat> 
So um, right now, there's a huge internship culture. So it's very different from when I grew up, which is great. Like, it's amazing. There are there are kids who actually make a ton of money as well working for startups in the US, which is, which is amazing. If you have the skills and if you have that work ethics, uh, you can totally do that. And <clears throat> it also gives you a chance to like experiment and figure out what is it that I really like to do, right? I mean, you can, uh, so, so the thing is the programming and the languages, right? You heads down, you sit down and, and code. It's, it is not, there is a perception that it's, it's something that, oh, you're, you're not interacting with people or if you're like good interacting with people, you shouldn't do that. You still have to communicate very well. What's your design and what's the, what's the architecture and then why this and why not, right? I mean, so this, there's a lot of, uh, communication in, in coding careers as well. And, uh, hands-on coding is what pays the most right so so you have to understand that eventually <clears throat> everyone the, you get to a stage where yes there is passion you also have to intersect it with all right i want to have a high quality life and what do i need to do that and with the least amount of effort what make what gives me what pays me the most right and that in today's world um uh, is technology unless you are a you know you work for a think tank and you went to a small liberal arts college in the US and you know how to think, right? Which is a different skill altogether. Um, being able to think, uh, you know, a lot of people might think that they know how to think, but most of us would only rehash or reiterate someone else's thoughts. We heard it from someone else, or we read it somewhere, or it's on the news, and then we would say that out as our own thoughts. This is what I think. Is that really what you really, really, is that your original thought, right? Is that something that came out of your brain or your mind? Um, it's very uh, it's very difficult to decipher that, right? So uh, be aware of that. And it takes some time to like kind of, under, kind of understand um, why that is. So uh let me pause there and any comments any questions on anything i said so far i don't want to keep talking all the time nothing <clears throat> okay good i'll press i'll pr i'll share my screen for a minute and i will you know show you one slide which kind of like i used this as as my pitch deck as part of my pitch deck this is one slide that i had used so let me uh, turn over and use that to kind of like talk through the rest of my career trajectory, right? So are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes, no, that. maybe no. Oh, good, yes. good, yes. all right. Got it, right. So the bottom left is Cognizant, right? That's where I started my career. And I spent like probably 11, 12 years of my career there. Because once you come to the US, you are, and especially if you're on a visa with a company, you can't really switch unless you get your green card. And a uh, typical green card is, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> right now it takes, uh, I think, 15 years, right? That's a good one third part of your or uh, of your career, unless you're able to accelerate it in some way or the other. But if you come on a typical L1 or an H1 visa, it will take you a good uh, 12 to 15 years to get your green card, right? There are ways to bypass it and short circuit it, which I, if you're interested, I'm happy to talk about later. And then, so Cognizant, and then I work for a couple of like small companies in between. I took a break, I came to India and I work with uh, Dr. Shashi Tharoor, you know, his office uh, as a, um, and, and I did a couple of projects for him, right, while I was in Trivandrum. This was in 2015, 16. And then I worked for this company called Bank of New York Mellon, which is like a custodian bank based in uh, downtown New York City. So the middle of the financial district and Wall Street, uh, where all the action happens, right? It's not known as the center of the financial world, the entire world, right? That's where all decisions happen. Um, so I worked there for uh, for some time again doing enterprise data right strategy product management in the large data space uh where, whereas with cognizant I, it was mostly in the healthcare sector that i worked so i switched i pivoted from healthcare uh to banking or finance again within technology so uh the industry matters and doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you're like very technical 
it matters if you also bring to the table the subject matter expertise of how the financial you know, you know industry works so interact with business you need to know you need to know terms like uh, you know securities and uh, um, um, you know direct income and uh, what's the return of investment right roe and roi those are common there's a what is the alpha factor what is the beta factor so you need to know a, a, a good you need to have a good sense of finance to be able to work even in technology within banks right so i developed that and then it was while i was there <clears throat> that i uh I applied uh, to the NYU Stern School of Business, right? And I got admitted. Uh, this, this the head of the department there. It's a very, you know, they mentor other people. So one of the people I, one of the mentors that I had while I was at BNY, uh, had said, "Hey, why don't you pursue higher education here in the in the and uh, and then by the time, right, the sweet spot of an MBA is like four to five years, uh, and I'm like after 15, 18 years in the industry, why do I need an MBA? But I applied anyway, and I got accepted. So I'm like, okay, you know, let me just give this a shot. And uh, in early 2020 is when I, you know, founded uh, Techphonic, and then there was no like looking back, right? There was a lot of uh, <clears throat> PR that came out and I was named a fellow, uh, a female founder fellow by the NYU Entrepreneurial Institute. Uh, and then there was, you know, Forbes ran a feature on me. Uh, there was a lot of press in India as well. So if you just search my name, right, you'll kind of like come across that. Uh, and then recently Columbia University uh, accepted me as one of the 12, um, you know, a top ed tech founders from all over the world actually it's not even just in the us right and and i'm doing a fellowship with columbia university now uh so and is this because i'm passionate about entrepreneurship or passionate about education or you know is it why is there such a huge smile on my face right again you smile for a picture and passion is what the level of involvement you bring to something so i'll you know turn off now i think everyone has seen enough of my face in multiple pictures and back to you okay all right uh so that was kind of my career trajectory and now i i'm an entrepreneur right whatever that means whatever that means so which means i run a company uh, and i handle all aspects whether it's marketing leadership managing a team hiring which is hr running operations, which is setting processes as to, hey, how do you, when a parent enrolls, what happens? Um, hiring tutors, right? And, uh, you know, Akshaya is starting to help me now, and she kind of has some more view as well. Uh, and then training them and then monitoring their work, right? And then building a curriculum. Uh, what, what needs to be taught to children now in the US to support them academically, uh, but also be futuristic, right? You don't want to teach them uh, old things which doesn't really have value so i'm designing a course actually now in blockchain for kids what does that mean so i have i have three kids right i have 11 year old son if he would be interested if i need to make him interested in a class and say yeah this is something fun and i'd love to continue doing that what should that be kids go to school and they're bored right they just are bored because and why does boredom happen uh boredom happens because whatever is being presented to you, the content is kind of, you kind of like know, you can predict what the next sentence is going to be, you know where this is going. So there's not much interest here. You're not engaging 100% of your brain power or mind power to, uh, to cap, it doesn't capture your attention. That's when kids are bored. So how do you develop content which can capture that attention, right? Which is, uh, it's a great pivot to, you know, defining passion as well. What is passion? Passion Passion means that, first of all, you, you have to be involved in what you're doing. And you have to constantly say, hey, you know, at the end of the day, uh, do I feel a sense of accomplishment? Do I feel like I did something or was I bored, right? Did I, you know, um, and do I, am I involved in politics? Am I doing what I'm doing, regardless of whether I feel um, I feel applauded and 
uh, people tell me that I'm doing a, do I need that external validation? Do I need someone else to tell me I'm doing a good job? Or do I just know within myself that, hey, I did my best today and, you know, I learned a lot and I learned new things and whatever I learned would be something that I can explain to others, right? Um, so that's a great indication of whatever I'm doing. Do I, am I looking for external validation or external, uh, do I need to be given credit and promotions or, you know, uh, accolades for me to feel good about myself? Or do I just feel good about myself because I know within that what I do is what I want to do, right? That's a good test. That's something that it would be helpful, right? If you start cultivating uh, right from the start. Because so I work for this company called Cognizant First, right? And one of the things that I was thinking of talking about is what does life in a large corporation do versus a startup, right? And in a large corporation, you are specialized and you're like pigeonholed into one narrow thing. So for 10 years at Cognizant, I designed databases. Uh, how do you how do you structure data in an effective way, which will, without performance impact, right, will pull business intelligence reports, which can be used in various um, data analytics uh, uh, applications. Uh, and again, with huge quantities of data. I did. That was my speciality. And then so I would be called in. I'm the consultant or I'm the specialist designing databases. I would do this. Yes, the pay is good, but eventually you're seeing the same kind of data again and again. You're explaining the same thing that you know to different people who's hearing it for the first time. It grows old, right? Whereas in entrepreneurship or a startup world, everyone does everything. Uh, and I can speak on a breadth of topics now, right? So it's also stressful. Um, the weight or the weight of uh, of running a company uh, and having to set culture, right? What is the culture of my company? How should people treat each other? How should people treat me? How should I treat people? My team who's working for me, right? There's a huge responsibility on my shoulders. It also makes you grow and evolve and, and transform, right? It makes you, it forces personal growth which is amazing that then reflects in your family how i am as a you know as a human being as an individual as a mentor it uh, goes into different aspects of my life um so i would say key takeaways is um the self awareness like ask yourself how do i feel at the end of the day with what i've done in a day uh and the second thing is do i need external validation or do i feel good about you know whatever i did myself and uh, the third is, am I bored? Or, hey, did I learn new things? And uh, is this what I want to be doing, right? Uh, you want to do various things. You don't want to just specialize and pigeonhole. You should be learning from other people. You should be the dumbest person in, this, in the room. And you should be learning from others constantly. And uh, you know it doesn't matter what, what it is. It could be technology, it could be marketing, it could be you know operations, it could be hiring, it could be what's the future of you know data. There was I just a, accepted a, I just a, you know attended a summit for all the chief data officers, right, CDOs in the finance industry, and it could be learning from others. So and uh, uh, the other thing is your career will evolve, right? You'll start probably in technology, hands-on coding. You could stick with that and do solution architecture roles, right? or you could pivot into you know, multiple areas. Um, and that'll come along, right? And it's good to just try things that come along and, uh, and see how and how, and you can be passionate about anything and everything. It's a choice, right? Passion is a choice. And uh, you can be passionate about it by giving more than you take, right? By researching, hey, what is it that I'm doing and how have other people do it? Right now, you have YouTube at your fingertips and everything is um, is searchable. So learning and bringing that to the table will keep you involved. Um, and uh, so these, these checks, right, I think I mentioned five times, right? As long as you keep iterating on that, I think you'll have a good idea. So I'll pause now and I'll open to questions and... Uh, you know, happy to, what's the first question I can answer? And then I typically give long answer to questions. 
So I'll speak more as I answer questions. Over to you guys. Now, I think I have a question. So you've had a right. long career as a person working for a company, and you've had your time innovating products and starting your own company as well. So what has been yeah. more uh, helpful to you in a career perspective? Um, see, in a large company, you have a stable paycheck, right? Your income is predictable. You can plan your life around, OK, you know, I can take on a home loan or a car loan or whatnot. And I I can be, you know, this is it's, it's pretty guaranteed, right? You have to really uh, perform really, really poorly uh, to be let go, right? In large corporations, uh, it's almost like a government job that stability is there. And you can, it's easy to, okay, where do I stand in comparison with the rest of the people uh, that I see around me, right? And uh, I, I can't say, I mean, it's it's not a guarantee, but uh, if you are in technology, uh, it's not like in business where you have, you know, hedge fund uh, return targets to meet uh, and you could be gone because of politics, right? I mean, large companies, you have stability. It's one way to live life, but, uh, you might need to find that, you know, the extra, what keeps you going outside of work. Work may not give you that. You'll need hobbies, you'll need to. And that's that's a great way to live too, right? You work because, hey, it's a stable thing. It's a, it's a large corporation. I know what I'm getting into. Um, and then I maybe, you know, do volunteering work during the weekend or I spend with kids or whatnot during the weekend. And that keeps my creative juices flowing. In an entrepreneurship, you really don't, don't have time for that, right? And if you have spare time, you just have to, I just watch a movie or just wind down, right? And because your your work and the you're talking through the day. So today, if my day starts at like 8 o'clock in the morning, I have meetings till 5 or 6 in the evening. And then when you get back home, and all of these meetings are things that I am putting on my career because I on my calendar because I want to do that not meetings in corporate environments where I'm just sitting there and playing politics, right? So that makes a huge difference. You have choice, right? Choice of where to work from, what to do in a day, and uh, how do you want to work, right? I mean, how do I present myself in this world? I have a better choice when I'm uh, not in a large corporation, whereas in a large corporation, you're told what to do, right? You you perform within that certain structure. Whereas you make that structure when you are in smaller corporations or in uh, startups. So I think there's a question. Yeah, yeah. Have another answer, a question. Yeah. Sure. So what advice do you have for students who want to start a startup while they are at college? Yeah. A lot of that is happening in Kerala, and it's uh, it, and that's great, right? There's a startup mission that the Kerala government supports, right? There's a there's a lot that happens. Um, running a startup, right, is a lot of work, and uh, um, so I would say there's a difference between you know a startup and a business. Most people start businesses when they are a startup is a business but i'll you know i'll explain what i mean uh if you are doing a business right out of college right um and if you have a business model this is how it, this is the financial model this is the operating model this is the uh this is how my my business is going to make money and this is my cost this is my accounting and uh, you know this is why it's a viable business model right uh, you you need experience or expertise, right, um, to kind of like put that together. Uh, if you come from a business family and if you've seen people around, you know, people growing up, if you've seen that being done, you will have an innate sense of it. Business is in your blood. There are a lot of people like that, like it's in your blood. Is my network unstable and my video passing? Or am I audible and visible enough? It's good. OK, all yeah, right. It's, yeah, it's, I'm, fine. it's fine. Yeah, I'm getting message that my network is unstable. 
So uh, if you are doing that, that that's great, right? But otherwise, if you you know if you're not, if your parents worked, uh, you know, in a they had a career where they were working for either the government or another corporation, and they don't talk much about at school. You don't at at home. You may not have the rounded, you know, uh, how do I run a business? And there's a huge steep learning curve right and that's okay you can bring in people right you can bring in people and you can learn you learn much faster when you are of, of anything and you'll grow as a person when you start your own thing than when you work for something else someone else right than that being in that corporate bubble and being told what to do and just doing that you learn much more are starting businesses right out of startups but then there's also a high rate of uh, failures in startups because you're attracted by you know classmates making 15 lakhs 20 lakhs out of college right or whatever it is the number and then if you just hey i want that and if you just go after that right you would have spent the time but then not taken it to fruition S starting a startup and running a business takes time perseverance and you have to iterate. You're constantly iterating and finding that product market fit. You're constantly learning and pitching and that pitching your business, right? Reflecting that. So you want to make sure that you're financially stable and not going after the short money. Uh, and your parents are not saying, hey, why? how come all your classmates are like making, uh, you know, these big salaries and why are you not, right? It takes time for a business to build up to a revenue model where the founder or the owner is able to draw a, a salary, a reasonable salary. So if you have that in you, then yes, starting a business is the fastest way of growth, personal growth, as well as professional growth, where you are learning, you learn all aspects of running a business, not just that one field that you're hired for, if that makes sense. Sure, you said it's best to learn by working with expert people, but can you tell us how to get in touch with people with such expertise? See, uh, there is an old saying, right? When the student is ready, the teacher will appear, right? Guru will appear or whatnot. So, so eventually, right, it's about, uh, it's, it's about what you attract to yourself, right? So I, I have a, I practice yoga, I have a meditation practice, right? I sit down and set my intention to for the day. What do I want this day to be? What are the immediate challenges that I face in my business and what kind of people do I need? I may not know what exists out in the world. What is the expertise of such people? But when I set that intention, uh, people, people start appearing in your life, right? You don't need to go looking out for them, right? Of course, you can do the net LinkedIn networking and you can look for what are other companies, you know, how, what is the expertise that uh, if you're looking for a mentor who's, who's, you know, extremely good in strategy, right? Financial strategy or operational strategy, right? You could look for people with that title in LinkedIn and who work for companies similar to yours and then, you know, message them and ask, hey, would you be willing to advise me, guide me? That's a long route. But otherwise, you, you know, keep talking to people and people will introduce you to other people. And, um, you know, you have to be specific in what you're asking, but you setting the intention is the first thing you need to do, right? Uh, if you are in an ocean, the ocean is there, right? But you need to be able to swim. And where are you swimming towards? How are you swimming? What stroke are you using? All of that comes from within you. Um, so initially, it is figuring out within and having internal clarity uh, about where am I now and what are the possible directions? It's a 360 degree circle, right? You could go in any direction. What makes sense and just asking yourself that use your internal intuition a lot of people underestimate the the kind of we know all the answers are within us a lot of people uh, look outside for answers you don't have to do that you just need to have the confidence to trust yourself and ask yourself for what is it that i'm what is the answer to the question i'm facing <clears throat> 
Does that make sense? I know it's a little spiritual. It's a little <laughs> qualitative, but uh, it's something that you realize after. Sure, thank you. It's a uh, that you realize after you know years of looking outside for answers. I'm just giving you the answer straight away if you're able to absorb that and yeah, and uh, you know take it in effect. That's that's the greatest thing. What else? Did I cover everything on my agenda? Is there anything more that you'd like me to um, speak about? Yeah, I'll I'll ask you one thing. Okay, <laughs> so uh, from your cognizant journey, the stable one. Yeah. One day you decided to start something of your own. So how all right. the community or the you are the family also that that. So how they accepted your choice. And also I'll be excited to know about your first follower, like the your team and how you built your first team. Sure. I so the pandemic, right, was was good and bad for the world in, in a lot of places, you know, were born just like a lot of babies were born out of the pandemic, right? Because that's what, <laughs> okay, that's a color joke. So a lot of babies and businesses were born out of the pandemic because people were not distracted by external factors, right? They could turn internally and create, right? And businesses are a creation too, just like human babies, right? A business is, in fact, I have this weird theory that a lot of women, uh, we are able to, you know, biologically, we are able to give birth to human beings. So we that's how we express our creativity. Uh, uh, and men, they can do that. So they give birth to businesses. That's how they express their creativity, right? And a business is just like a human being. It has a life cycle. A startup is a baby. It's growing and iterating and learning to walk and learning to talk and try and figure out what is it that I'm doing. And it has this growth, right? It has this growth phase for the first, uh, whatever it is, like three years, five years, 10 years, you know, different startups have different life cycles. And then it, it the growth stops and it's kind of like stabilizing. It's not stagnating, but it's like the growth curve is like less steep and uh, the, you know, just like a baby, right? And then it eventually dies because other businesses have come up, which has, so a business can only have so much iteration within its own business model. It eventually has to die down and restart, right? or it splits or merges with another business or there's like a lot of variations. It's just like a baby, right? So uh, the corporate life teaches you how an organization will grow into, right? What are the departments? Are they vert Is it vertically integrated or horizontally integrated, right? What are the forces of nature? What is the industry? So when you're in a specialized role as well, you're talking about this is what the other company is doing. This is These are our internal goals. You learn a lot in corporate as well uh, if you do well, right? I mean, you have to do well and not just do the, the minimum. That's one thing. There are a lot of people who are like, yeah, they'll take a job and they'll they'll do the bare minimum that is being asked. I have people like that in my company as well, and I let them go really fast, right? If you give them a task and if they never give you an update and if it takes them forever, you have to ask three times before they even start to work with it. That's not a great thing. But if you are very involved and if you, okay, this is what I'm being asked, let me do more than more than that, right? You will learn and that learning is great. Uh, in a corporate environment, it will help you when you start a business. So there was no earlier question as well as to, you know, is it great to start a business? I would say if there are like three or four people who bring different skills to the table, one of them can do technology, one of them can do business, one of them can do finance, that's a great founding team, right? In co-founders, you should also, three engineers all doing the same thing, right? That um it's it's okay but eventually you'll have to learn to do different things and split the role uh, so from a corporate to a, a startup for me at least it was not an intentional choice there's actually a forbes article out there as to why i started or how i started tech Phoenix, so i won't repeat the story you can read that at your own time if you just search for my name and the company name which is tech Phoenix, you'll find the articles uh 
for me, it was a, you know, it was me being a parent. It was something that I created for my child. And then it just grew and grew. Uh, and trust me, it's it's a lot of work and it creates a lot of stress because then, oh, my God, from a corporate high paying job, I'm doing this. Is it worth doing? Right. There is a time when you have to analyze uh, this and initially it will not be worth. Right. You'll you'll make much more if you go back to a, taking a job. But then is it worth it? It's a long call. If you know the stock language, it's a long call. So. Um, <clears throat> If you pause to think about, hey, you know, does this make sense? You may decide not to. So sometimes you just keep going without thinking, without turning back or without pausing. You just keep going, trusting that you'll get someday. And then I've been doing this for three years now. Now I've come to a stage where, you know, I'm I'm finding people who will be able to, it's it's just like a baby, you know, the first two, three, it's a baby. The mother has to be or the father has to be. Somebody has to take care of it. Once it reaches like two, three years, yeah, it can, you know, you can either hire someone to take care of it at home or it's just like a baby. Think in terms of that and then everything becomes clear, if that, if that makes sense. So to answer your question, for me, it was not a conscious to people entrepreneurship from a corporate life it's something that happened and i went with it and it has helped me grow tremendously as a person things i've done things i've been accepted to institutions and circles i can talk like i would not have been able to talk like this five years back right i can speak at in depth about the breadth of subjects and uh, that learning is something i credit to um you know to the business but that also came from me being in a you know working for someone else for 15 years right so it's i mean there's no right or wrong answer each of you will have your own path no two people's path will be the same so and don't try to replicate somebody else right i mean another person you can't do the same don't like look at somewhere someone else and say i want to do that you won't be able to your path is unique to you trust Trust it and believe in yourself that, hey, this is my path and I'm fine with it, right? And and go with it. Yeah. So one uh, so thing was... Hey. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, one more thing is like, your first follower always like very important. The first thing you are building, first right? Part. Now you build that, yeah. your first kind of people with the same mission or goal you have. See, okay, if you're asking who was my first customer in my business, that's one thing. That's not what you no. That's what, what I was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is like your team, no? Like you have a vision. Right. So have you built right. that team? Have you convinced it is what you want or your right. vision? Have you convinced it? Right. Right. You know, to be quite honest, I initially when I started this, right? I I was like, okay, how do I go? How do I go? Every day morning, I would, I mean, first day morning, I would wake up, get a cup of strong coffee, and I'm like, okay, how do I go about it? And uh, gosh, it's been some time that I can't even remember. I had reached out to, well, I had, I had actually mentored women, uh, girls in CET when they were, there was a strike. There was a strike where they were trying to get an extension to the ladies hostel. There was like they had to be back by five o'clock or something and the boys hostel had no curfew at all. Right. They could go back anytime. So there was a strike. And then so th there is a strong network of women of CET, women who graduated and passed out of CET in the US. It's called Sitara, you know, the stars of CET, Sitara. So we, a bunch of us who like constantly interact on that group had helped the girls, you know, speak their voice, whether it is, hey, you know, this is what you're asking for. Stay, we are behind you. We funded them. We motivated them. We gave them the strength of we have been through. We have, we, I mean, a lot of us have been in election and, 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 you know, suffered the travesties that happened there, right? He, including there are girls who, uh, uh, College of Engineering Trivandra or Yangle, it's other uh, uh, city in the Korchur Mariana, and a chitola alkareke, the ladies hostel on the law, alkari madile kerniki. 
എന്നിട്ട് ബാത്റൂമിന്റെ ആ ഒരു വെന്റിലേറ്റർ വിൻഡോ ഉണ്ടല്ലോ ദർ ആർ പീപ്പിൾ ഹു ലൈക്ക് സ്റ്റാൻഡ് മതിലെ കയറി അതേ കൂടെ നോക്കുന്ന ആൾക്കാരുണ്ട് ലോക്കൽ പീപ്പിൾ ഔട്ട് സൈഡ് ഇറ്റ് കുഡ് ഈവൻ ബി ബോയ്സ് ഫ്രം ദി മെൻസ് ഹോസ്റ്റൽ എം എച്ച് ഇ എന്നുള്ള പയ്യന്മാരും വരും സോ ദർ ആർ ഗേൾസ് ഹു വുഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് അൺബിലീവബിൾ ഹു വുഡ് ടേക്ക് എ മെഴുകുതിരി എടുത്തോണ്ടായിരിക്കും ബാത്റൂമിൽ പോകുന്നത് എന്നിട്ട് ദേ വിൽ സ്വിച്ച് ഓഫ് ദ ലൈറ്റ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ടോർച്ച് എന്നിട്ട് അവര് കുളിച്ചു കഴിഞ്ഞ് അടുത്ത ഉടുപ്പിട്ടേ അവര് ലൈറ്റ് ഇടത്തുള്ളൂ സോ ദർ ആർ പീപ്പിൾ ഐ നോ സോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഹാപ്പൻ ഇൻ സി ടി ആർ പീപ്പിൾ ഹു സോ സച്ച് എക്സ്പീരിയൻസസ് ഷെയറിംഗ് സച്ച് എക്സ്പീരിയൻസസ് മേക്സ് യു റിയലി you know and you want to help the juniors right not go through it ipper the lh building this like i mean was nalla security okay and it's different but 20 years back this has happened so we are a, we have we have that connect and the community so when i reached out and i had helped these uh, these you know i had helped and mentored and guided so when i reached out, when i called them and said i'm doing this and then i you know i want a few people from india to help me they reached out to their juniors and said ee cheechi ana njangale uthri help cheyidittunda you should help them back so then one of them who was like very enterprising hasina nerdu pere to the ct lo la arkilo ariyavengi you might know she she graduated to 3 years back 2019 ile graduate idu probably 20 ile so she was like this and the start of the pandemic right pillar kaarku onnum illa cheya so every day it's like okay you know padtham ellam kaniyu which is like a waste of time anyway whatever you learn in see uh, in the college okay uh, computer science or operating system okay padichale that is helpful right i mean you're you're doing the traveling salesman problem you will practice all of that otherwise most of it is like very outdated so the um she is like okay i can get done with that and then you know she would spend 3 4 hours and then one person right this is what we are doing and the okay idu cheyam so i used to have working sessions ravale yan ezhudaita first thing i do is like have a call with her we'll share the screen and do a working session namak idu cheyam come up with a project plan so then it's it's you have to be equally involved right the first follower is like yeah i understand what and she is equally she's not just telling me what to do she's doing it with me right you kind of need to be yeah that's very important and to be one among them right to be able to guide you need to be one among them and you need to know everything that you know you need to be willing to help them and respect them and give them the credit for what they are doing right that respect and honor is very important and then they will bring in their friends and hey okay let me oh idu veno alle i mean graphics undakanam yeah yeah ende oda 12th class padicha oru payan undu he is doing uh, you know marketing design so then you just need to it'll it'll keep it's an automatic process it's just like a baby growing up there's an intelligence within you know the so the team will then grow by itself yeah and the first you the first follower comes out of what you have done right you you should give and give and give uh so that you have built a bank of favors right that so from not taking it's from giving and helping others that that you build a network of people that you can call up and ask hey you know i i'm facing this and then they'll help you they, you don't even have to ask people to help because you have helped them they'll automatically feel obliged yeah so all right coming up on time guys and at 10:30 i do have another meeting to go to so you know um it was an amazing opportunity to be able to speak to all of you uh my 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 personal email is just am.andrews@gmail.com you can reach out to me or you can um connect with me on linkedin i you know if i find people from kerala i do accept most of the time happy to and i respond to messages on linkedin as well so linkedin is the best way to get in touch with me if you just search an andrews tech fanik or nyu you'll find me and uh, uh the picture is the same so it's easy to to connect and then uh, yeah feel free to message me anything i can help with happy to and uh, if yeah thank you thank you akshaya yes sure yeah yeah rahul happy to you know just send me a message on linkedin and i'm happy to share my number and you can just call me and uh, and also i am looking to you know i i could use help if any of you are interested what techfonic does is math and uh, uh, math and tech right we subscription uh, classes right weekly classes 
and uh, also we, for winter i'm i'm designing a boot camp what does it mean what is web3 what is what is defi decentralized finance what is you know um <clears throat> what is an nft like the basics of what the blockchain industry has evolved to uh, as a boot camp as a winter like one week camp for students and uh, being able to teach them using animation videos on YouTube, right? So if anyone is interested in helping me design that curriculum, uh, it would be a great experience, learning experience for you as well, because we all learn most when we teach. Um, so feel free to get in touch with me. And uh, I, you know, um, I'm always looking for high quality tutors, math and coding. And I also do conversational Malayalam, right? Malayalam. So if you know amazing Malayalam teachers who are able to interact with kids in a fun way, uh, feel free to refer them to me. And, uh, you know, I'll be, and there is techphonic.com slash careers. There is a place where you can apply to be a tutor. You can apply for internal roles. That way it will go through my HR process. And if you mentioned that you spoke to me, the team will, you know, see that and share the, your profile with me. Uh, if you would love to engage with Techphonic and, you know, that also opens up access to me. Uh, you get to talk to me and learn from me if that's valuable for you. Um, happy to take it from there. Yeah. Techphonic.com slash careers is the best way to have you in my system, right? And then my team will get to you. All righty. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot. Uh -huh. And any other questions, message Thank me on LinkedIn. So yeah, definitely. Sure. Thank you so much for that awesome session. It's like it's our first new learn session, I guess, with a person from a different time zone. So it's been an awesome experience. And you've been answering all our questions. So right. honestly, thank you for that. Yeah. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye.